So hence everyone is here and people are still joining. So we are here to learn about the basic and fundamental of an cyber security. Okay, so before we start, let me give you a quick introduction about myself. Okay, hi team. This is Abhishek. I am into cyber security domain from last seven plus years. I started my career as an in, into a network domain. Then I moved into uh, cyber security, uh, particularly in cyber security started in the field of an offensive side of security. That is your pen testing field. Okay, then uh, uh, was very much uh, in curious to learn about the defensive part of security as well. Okay, so uh, slowly I started uh, learning about the defensive part of security. You call it as an SOC, how SOC team work. What are the implementation of an SOC? How we defend again against any attack? Okay, what will be the post attack mitigation? Okay. So let's say if attack has been done, how we are going to find out the root cause, how we are going to analyze it, how we are going to collect the evidence as well. That is a part of your forensic team. Okay. So in this period, I try to manage uh, uh, to get few of the certification in my back. So if you talk about the certification from uh, EC Council Belt, I have few certification that is your CH, CSCU, CTIA, CSA, ECIH, and from an uh, Belt, I have few certification that is your A plus, Network plus, Security plus, CYSA plus, Pentest plus, and a few of the cloud certification as well. That is your AZ900, AZ104, and one of an auditing certificate that is FN, ISO 27001 LA. Okay, so we established in the year uh, 2016 and we are delivering multiple uh, training, not only uh, particularly into certification, we, we started delivering training into uh, custom course as well. Okay, so anything related to cybersecurity domain, either we call it as a training, either we call it as a uh, this particular uh, consultancy services, we, we, we do provide that as well. Okay. And this year we also almost delivered. Uh, you can say uh, we have trained uh, more than 30, 40,000 people so far. Okay, 200 courses plus courses we are offering. We have uh, an set of a number of trainers in house. Okay, now what we will be learning in this course. So uh, we'll start with a security foundation. Okay. So in that we'll be discussing about the basic uh, security fundamental, how the security comes here, uh, over the place, what are the triad of security. Then we will be moving into a bit technical part that is your Linux essential, Linux fundamental. Okay, so when we talk about ethical hacking, so over there we required some skills of a Linux as well. Okay to write some script, to connect with an another uh, system, to get an access to the system or to find the vulnerability of a website or you can say the vulnerability of a device or of a network. So for that, a basic understanding of a Linux has been required at the beginning. Okay, so we will be clearing our concepts over here. Then we will move into an offensive part of a security, which is known as your ethical hacking. Okay, so what are the methods and methodology to perform an attack? From an scratch, we will be learning over here. Then this is the part where we will be discussing about the web area. How to perform a web application pen test or how to perform and how to find out a vulnerability over a website or over a server. What are the top 10 vulnerability listed into the market? Okay. So that we'll be discussing over here. Then we will be moving into the defensive part of security. This is your offensive part of security, and this is your defensive part of security. Okay. Once the attack has been done, how to collect the information of that? What is the root cause of that attack is? How to collect any evidence from that attack? We will be learning in this three domain introduction to and threat intelligence incident respond post attack and digital forensic to gain and uh, uh, you can say to get an evidence 
of the post compromise machine then at the last we'll be looking into the cryptography cryptography is what how the data has been traveling from one source to another source okay let's say if we visited any website and that website is asking some details for example we visited info sector in website and over there they are asking certain details that is your name email id phone number okay now this is again a confidential data now infosec train has to maintain certain things they have to maintain that whatever data they are collecting from user that need to be protected okay the data which has been traveling from your device to the infosec train server during this time the data should be encrypted and how that data will be flowing if it is not encrypted if it is going into in plain text format any attacker can intercept in between and get the data get the details okay so for that we started cryptographic in cryptography we have different set of an algorithm we'll discuss into that okay what are the different types of an algorithm which particular algorithm we have been using nowadays okay to secure we have a uh, ssl as well okay and to get more security we have certificate as well how to claim for that certificate okay so everything will be discussing into the cryptographic part now what is an information security okay oh. now information security is what information security is to protect the information of the data data as in uh, from unauthorized access or uh, the data from not only from your physical asset from your digital assets as well okay so in, in information security we can include your uh, devices we can include your physical devices as well physical parameters as well okay your table your uh, you can say the chairs your laptop okay uh, your mouse and whatever there inside that laptop as well everything okay main thing you can say the asset assets are what which are holding certain value for an organization assets are what that is holding certain value asset can be anything for an organization asset can be the table asset can be the chair asset can be the person as well because they are holding certain value okay to secure to protect this asset we use we started using the information security how we started using information security by applying the controls okay by maintaining confidentiality integrity and availability and cyber security is what it's a part of an information security it's a subset of an information security in cyber security we only secure the data So this will be the definition of an information security. Information security is called referring refers to the practice protecting information and data from an unauthorized, undisclosed, unrestricted, okay, or to modify or to destruction. Information security ensures the confidentiality, integrity, availability of sensitive information. Okay. Now when we call about CIA trade not only we are having confidentiality integrity and availability in that ci trade we are having authenticity and non reputation as well okay now what the ci trade has been talking about these are the three pillars of your information security in which your security has been setting on everyone is is behind this to maintain confidentiality to maintain integrity to maintain availability okay confidentiality is what the data need to be safeguarded whatever information you are providing let's say the details you are providing if i am asking certain details uh let's say your name email id and phone number are you uh, uh, will you be giving that details to me 
that to have been verified first whether that person is an authorized one or not to whom we are providing a data because the data is not sensitive information okay now confidentiality what confidentiality has been saying the data which you have been uh, accessing okay only the authorized person can access the data apart from that no one can access the data because it's some sensitive information okay integrity what in integrity has been saying the data which you are accessing should not be modified should not be deleted should not be tampered it should be free from errors and whenever you want the data should be available then how we started maintaining this confidentiality integrity and availability okay now this is my device and let's say this is someone else's device now i want to connect i want to communicate with this device i want to share some details okay now i'm sending an email to this id so in that email my message is hello okay now confidentiality has been saying that only the authorized person can have an access to this message or to this details authorized person is that email id which we are providing in that email okay now how i will be maintaining the confi confidentiality by encrypting by particular encrypting this data encrypting as in convert that plain text into an unreadable format into a gibberish format okay now think in that way think from an attacker perspective now okay you are an hacker you try to manipulate it uh, manipulate and try to get inside the same network okay something has been traveling in that network and you found this thing are you able to understand what has been written will that be easy to read it it is not okay now only the authorized person will be will be having a key to decrypt this message okay now this unauthorized person is not able to read this message but can he temper this message can he update or can can, can he certainly change this message if he is not able to read it easily he can change the message okay or what the attacker uh, that hacker can do over here he can replace this message with an url and that url is a malicious url if this xyz open this email and click on that email straight away the malware will get installed into his system a phishing attack if he cannot read it he can change the data okay that's the reason we started using integrity the main motor behind to that okay so generally in hashing what we do we convert the data into uh, you can say into different size if into different length okay so you can say generally into n characters okay so it will be something like this let's say hello to convert the uh, hello into an hash
something like this a hash value will be produced depending on to the algorithm you will get an output the output will be generated okay the main purpose of hashing is to uniquely identify the data okay and the best part of an hash is there is no dehashing kind of an technology for encryption we have a decryption for encoding we have a decoding for an hash we never have a dehashing kind of an technology it's a one way street whatever the hash has been produced we cannot reverse it back okay if the hash has been produced for hello that is this information and next to that if we update the message from upper case h to lower case h the hash will change okay and there are multiple algorithms to be used in hash we have sha256 sha512 okay md5 ntlm lm hash these are what these are your algorithms which have been used okay let me quickly show you how the hash is been calculated okay so i will be generating md5 hash my message will be security generate a hash value for this word here we have md5 hash and sha1 hash okay now always remember hash is what it's a one way street if we try to modify this message or change this message the hash will change the value will change from an upper case s to lower case s and see the hash value has been changed okay now how this thing has been used so let's take an example same example over here two person have been communicating a and b sending a message hello so first encryption has been made then post to that a hash has been calculated okay now a is sending this message to b okay so this was my message hello further to that now when b receives the data what he is going to do first he is going to decrypt this message from e l l o h to h e l l o now what he is going to do he is going to calculate the hash for h e l l o once he calculated the hash he got a value 2 f g h 1 2 now he is going to verify whether the both the hashes have been matching or not if both hashes have been matching that means you are maintaining the integrity the data is not been tampered you are getting the correct value if not a message will be sent back to a you have sent me an incorrect message please resend the data or your data is not fully received okay so this is how we started maintaining the integrity next is your availability what the availability has been saying there is a sale going on on amazon website the sale is live you want to purchase a phone you selected a model you added it to the cart now you are making a payment during that time the service got crashed okay 
service got crashed again you visited the amazon page still you are not able to open the page what has just happened connect with the customer service to know what is happening in how many times the website will be back or to go to different channels okay now for this amazon there will be a loss reputation loss as well financial loss as well isn't it reputation loss people will start uh, saying some uh, as we are into digital era people will start tweeting about amazon that the service is not able from last 10 minutes 20 minutes or xyz whatever the time will be okay and not only that they will start uh, shifting into uh, different channel different different uh, other e-commerce website to purchase the item by that time so definitely amazon is will going to face certain damages okay now in this case the service is not available okay now how amazon is going to maintain this availability okay so if one service is down service not available so there will be a backup service as well backup servers and in between we are going to place a load balancer so whatever request has been made that request has been forwarded to this backup server and you will be getting your page if anyone has performed a dos attack forward the request over here into your backup servers And to forward the request, we have load balancers in between. So what we are doing, we are maintaining the availability. Inside an organization, we want to access some files. So where we are storing that files into the cloud drive. And that is made available to each and everyone. Access has been given to each and everyone. Okay, a limited access will be provided. Integrity and confidentiality is also been maintained. Only read access. Okay, so this is how we are going to maintain confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Now we have two more terms. One is your authenticity and third is uh, fourth is your authenticity authenticity and fifth is your non repetition. Now what is an authenticity? Genuine. Okay, authenticity refers to an assurance of the information data or transaction are genuine accurate and trustworthy. sent from an authorized person how we do that if any particular email has been received so first what we do we check from which domain this email has been received whether that person is an authorized one or not if you are receiving an email tomorrow from an infosec train so you are going to check who is sent from an infosec train it's a genuine email or not how we do that by checking the domain Domain is your infosec train. If you are receiving an email from an Amazon, how we check that? By looking at the domain. Whatever the name of an employee is, let's say XYZ at the rate Amazon.com. How we say that this is this email is an authenticated one? By checking the domain. Okay, when we visit any website, how we cross verify whether that website is a genuine one or not? How we get to know? Good. The certification provider the body is going to do an authentication, is going to do a verification part for you. Okay, first they will be collecting the information from that website owner. 
that tell me how you are going to prove that you are an authorized one or not. So website owner, what he is going to do, he is going to submit all his document to claim for the certificate first. He is going to share his uh, public key as well. Once everything has been verified, the certificate body is going to assign a certificate. Along with the certificate, they are going to give him a private key as well to access that certificate. Okay. Now the certificate body is maintaining authenticity. Is telling us, okay, this is a Gen One website. It's a secured one. You can share the data with them, and whatever data has been provided, that will be encrypted. Okay, that is what your authenticity authenticity is. Mm -hmm. Now, what my definition has been saying, non repetition ensures that the party involved in the transaction cannot deny their action or intentions. Okay. Now, in this session, how many people have joined the session? 43. Okay. Now, on to the next day, you cannot deny the fact that you haven't attended this training. Isn't it? How I can cross verify it? I think. Tomorrow you go ahead and say that uh, uh, to the salesperson or to any 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 particular person uh, from an infosec train that you haven't attended the training. So when you entered inside this training, inside this application, you had given your email ID, your name. Isn't it to connect with this application to connect with this go to meeting? Along with that, into the recording, the voice has been captured. And if you check for the logs as well at the back end, your details have also been captured. So you cannot deny the fact you have attended this training. That is what your non reputation has been saying. Or if you send any email from your email ID onto the next day, you cannot deny the fact that you haven't sent that email. We can cross verify those things, whether that email is a legit one or not. Okay, or if you send any particular WhatsApp message, until unless that message has been deleted, you cannot deny the fact that you haven't sent that message. We can cross verify it. It's been received from the sender send. Okay, now that is what your non repetition is. It ensures that the party involved in the transaction cannot deny their action or intention. That can be cross verified if it has been sent by them. Okay, now these are the elements of your information security confidentiality, integrity, availability, authenticity, and non repetition. You cannot claim for the things. Let's say uh, if you are sending any any details or any any particular uh, document to anyone. Okay, that can be any source over the WhatsApp, over an email, uh, over the drive. Okay, that can be any source. Now on to the next day, you cannot uh, claim for it that you haven't sent the details because you already provided that link, you already uploaded that information, and you only send that particular message. So we can cross verify those things. That who is the sender, by what time the message has been sent. Okay, this can be cross verified. This can be questioned. Okay, if you are attending any of the training and you have been saying that uh, in your organization, you have been saying that you had completed the training. Now your organization, what they will be doing, they will be asking for the proof. If you had attended the training, give us the proof, provide us the proof. Then how we are going to provide the proof by giving the certificate that this is the my training certificate okay now cyber security further has been distributed in two domains one is your offensive 
and one is your defensive offensive we call it as a red team and defensive we call it as a blue team now in red team what we do Okay, now in pen test, what we do? We got an vulnerability, we take an advantage of that vulnerability to exploit it. Okay, in vulnerability assessment, we only find out the vulnerability, that's it. Okay, so there are again three steps scanning has been done. Then enumeration has been done and the identification of an vulnerability has been done. Post to that, exploitation of that vulnerability has been done inside and pen test. Okay, so we have different different types of pen testing. We have mobile pen test, we have cloud pen test, we have network pen test. Okay, we have active directory pen test. Now red team is what? Red team covers each and everything your information security, digital security as well. Information security as in your physical security is also been counted over here. There is a server, server room, for that team, what they are going to do, that team guys, they are going to go, they are going to try to get inside that particular server room physically. They will try to break the lock as well. They are going to check the control as well. If it, the CCTV camera has been deployed, let's try to hack that CCTV camera. Let's try to send a phishing email inside this organization to know whether each and every person are aware of the inform of this security or not, cyber security or not. Have anyone noticed such kind of an activity in their organization? Randomly, one fine day, a phishing email has been sent internally to circulate it. Okay, then we have is your defensive team or the blue team. What the blue team will be doing? And what are different different domains we do have inside and blue team? Who is trying to connect with this network? What request has been sent from internal network to an internet? For an organization, internal network is an secured one and internet is an unsecured one. Okay, if users from that internal network want to connect with an internet in between, what do we have? We have a firewall, we have a DMZ. The request has been made from this uh, uh, system. It will go inside this firewall, then to a DMZ. If the server is not been hosted, move to an internet. Then the request will come from an internet to the firewall. Filtration has been done. Then the request will be received into the uh, device. Okay. Now the SOC team is going to monitor each and every activity. What request has been made? What request has been received? Who has made the request? By what time the request has been made? Okay, so these are your defensive side of insecurity. One is performing an attack and one is defending that attack. Now there are different, different types of an attacker. Okay. So there is black hat hacker, white hat hacker, gray hat hacker, script kiddies, insider hacker, cyber terrorist, advanced persistent threat, activist. Okay, now what are black hat hackers? Now, black hat hackers are those people who have malicious intention. They are your unethical hackers.
Okay, their intention is to get the information to leak the detail to exploit that vulnerability To disclose that information publicly White hat hacker who are these people? We go by the book we go by the rule Okay, now this gray hat hacker who are these people? Now this great hacker is having uh, both intentions Either they can be a black hat hacker either they can be a white hat hacker their intentions can be changed They are the opportunist people you can say Okay, let's say if I find out the vulnerability in info sector in website So at the beginning my intentions will be in good so what I will be doing I will be try I will try to connect with an higher authority of an info sector and, and will share the details Okay, this is the vulnerability fix this vulnerability and reward me for this Okay, now if that organization Ignores this message they fix the vulnerability and does not reward or does not give any acknowledgement to that particular person Now what that attacker will be doing his intentions will change he will disclose the vulnerability publicly Okay at beginning his intentions were good isn't it He given the information the complete information has been provided by him to that organization Now that organization did not acknowledge him back Attackers intentions changed from an Good intention to a malicious intention. So he acted as a gray hat hacker the opportunist people Okay, you might have heard uh, one particular term which has been um, uh, Rolling out into the market nowadays. That is your bug bounty heard about bug bounty Okay, so nowadays organization are uh, Doing such kind of an uh, activity. So what they will be doing they will be asking people to go ahead and find out the vulnerability in such kind of such application or such uh, you can say devices if you find out the vulnerability we are going to reward you and this is a public challenge which has been given by them to identify the weakness okay when iphone 12 was been launched during that time apple what they have said we had enrolled we have we have uh, uh, came up with a new operating system. If anyone finds a vulnerability, we are going to reward you. Okay, so like this, the challenges have been uh, made public, and uh, these people take an opportunity out of it. White, even the white hat hacker and the gray hat hacker. Okay, then we have the script kiddies. Who are these people? Script kiddies. Aware of script kiddies? They are the newbies Don't have complete knowledge complete understanding of an attack Just copy paste a copywriter you can say they just copy the code from an internet and try to perform the attack Not having complete knowledge about the tool about the attack Insider attacker Let's say I'm not happy with my organization. I'm associated with this organization from last five years And I'm hoping that this year I will be getting a good appraisal. I will be getting a good position as well But my manager does not acknowledge this thing And I'm very much disappointed So at this point of time I can act as an insider threat for an organization I can disclose some of the information. I can leak some information. I can sell some information That is what your insider attack or insider threat is Okay, then we have is a cyber terrorist Cyber terrorist are what the person uh, uh, the attacker where you can say uh, the human life is on a stake from that attack Okay that is your cyber terrorist. Then is your advanced persistent threat APT. What is an advanced persistent threat? Okay, 
to maintain the record into the device. Let's say if I attacked into your device, into your system. Okay, so nowadays what attackers are doing while performing an attack, okay, they will send a malware which is going to stay inside it. Whenever they want to connect with this device, with the help of that straight away, they can connect the device. Not only that, they can monitor the device as well. What that person has been doing, which website he has been visiting, what are the credentials of that website with this APT threat, they can get all these details to maintain the persistence into their device. Okay, the presence into their device. A backdoor will be created and will be open. Whenever required, just connect with that malware. Okay, now activists are what this particular suicidal hacker are what they know what will be the end result, but still they perform that attack. Okay, that is what your suicidal hacker is. Okay, now we have one more attacker type that is your hacktivist. Who are these people? What they are going to do? Nation sponsored hackers that like go for the hack for a particular cause. Sponsored one. Okay. Or those who are having certain political agenda or social cause. That is your activist. The very famous group of an activist staff. GOP. Guardians of Peace. Okay. Now, we are going to start with an a uh, bit uh, part of an offensive security now. Okay. Now to perform an offensive security, before to that, let's understand how many different types of an pen testings are there. So what are the different different types of pen testing we do have? Types of testing. If organization want to perform a pen test, now what are different different types of pen tests we have? Then we have gray box. Uh, I am providing a consultancy into end testing. Now organization, they don't have in-house team. Okay, so what they will be doing, they will be hiring some people, such kind of in people to perform and test. Okay, now organization wants to perform an vulnerability assessment or a pen testing for them. Okay, now there are three different set of criteria that which kind of a testing they want. Okay, now we have black box testing, we have gray box testing, and we have white box testing. In black box testing, organization will not going to give any information. No knowledge will be given about the target. You just have to collect the information from your end from scratch. Okay, and then find out the vulnerability. Black box testing is what? No knowledge. About the target. Okay, the pen tester is not having any knowledge about the target, just the name of it. So he will be uh, performing a from scratch. He will be collecting the information first about uh, uh, that organization that what uh, how many employees are there inside this organization who have been associated, on which network they have been sitting, what are the IP range they have been sitting, what are the device uh, uh, IP address for that organization, and then they are going to perform and scan after that. Okay, now we have a gray box testing. Uh, many of the time, gray box and white box is very much common for an organization. If it is an in-house team or if it is an uh, uh, not in-house team, uh, generally they go with a white uh, white box and a gray box system. Okay, now a gray box is what? Here you will be getting a bit information, a partial information, a partial knowledge about the target. Okay, so a scope will be defined, a bit information will be given. Let's say uh, organization name, 
organization uh, IP range in which they have been sitting and few of the IP address. That's it. Okay, full knowledge. 10 IP has been provided out of the 10 IP, 5 IP belongs to the uh, device, 2 IP belongs to the server, 1 IP belongs to the website, okay, and rest of the IP belongs to the database. So complete knowledge has been, uh, information has been given that these are the web servers IP, these are the website IP, these are the database IP, inside the database belongs to, uh, let's say the H one database is of an HR, one database is of an account, Okay, now go ahead and try to find out the vulnerability from this IPs, from this sets of an IP. Now, if you want to perform an attack or if you want to perform an uh, pen test, so there are certain steps of an attack or steps of an hacking, we say, in general term. Okay, so first step will be reconnaissance or we also call it as a information gathering or we also call it as a footprinting. Okay, now at this point of time, we don't have any knowledge about the target. So what we are going to do, we are going to collect the information. That is what our first step has been saying. Gather the information, perform a footprinting, perform a, a, a collect more detailed information about the target. Okay, so in that we have a passive footprinting and an active footprinting as well. Passive footprinting as in you are going to get the information from an open source. Okay, active is what you are going to connect with someone or we connect with that particular uh, that uh, particular source to get more information. Now let's say I am your target. Abhishek is your target. Now how you are going to collect an information of an from of this particular person? With an map, we do a scanning. It's a scanning tool. You don't have any information about Abhishek, zero knowledge about it. This is your first step. You are simply collecting the information, where he is staying, where in which organization he has been associated with. Because for phishing also, you require some information, isn't it? You yes. Requ you will be required the email ID, or you will be required a, a phone number to do a phishing attack. In phishing also, we have different different technique, phishing, wishing, and smishing. Okay, phishing has been done over an email, wishing has been done over a call, and smishing has been done over an SMS. So for to perform this attack as well, you require some information. So you are starting from the beginning. You don't have any information. You're collecting the information as of now. Okay, we are not performing any attack. We are simply gathering the information. What my step number one has been saying, information gathering, footprinting, get the information about your target. What will be the sources available to collect the information? Absolutely, yes, from social media account, we can get some information, okay? So we have one technique which is called Google dorking or Google hacking. To use Google in a better way, in a simplified way, we use mm -hmm. Google Docking. We use Google Doc. I will be showing you that as well. Okay. So, anyone want to get nominated over here? Just I will be getting a bit information, not a bit, uh, just an overview. I will be showing you. Now, what I can do, I can use this Google operator in order to find out the details. So what do we have? We have a URL over here. This blue color part is known as your title. 
and this black color part is known as your text okay so we will be finding this person in this all domain so first i will be trying to find out in text then i will try to find out in title then i will try to find out in url what i'm doing i'm simply narrowing down my searches okay so in text what is my search result now 7040 Okay, now let's narrow down a little bit, bit, a little more, a bit, you can say a bit more. Now I'm going to search in inside your text, uh, inside your title part. What is my search result? Okay, if we go further in URL, you will get the Result. So what you can do, you can simply go by your name to identify to get more information. Similarly, the attacker or any pen tester, what he will be doing, he will be simply narrowing down his search result in order to get the exact result, uh, exact information. Okay. Not only that, we have a database as well for this by the name of a GSTB, Google Hacking Database. Okay, now whatever the operators have been updated or is been used by any particular person or created by any particular author that has been updated over here. So if you want to search for index profiler, so you can use this operator if you want to see SC manager details. So you can use this if you want to check for any particular user login uh, a vulnerable page is there. So you can use this uh, particular operator in order to find out. So we have list of an operators available. Docs. We also call it as a docs. Okay. Not only this. In this we have uh, uh, this doc. We have the exploits available as well. Okay. That's a very good website, Google Hacking Database. So whenever you get a type, explore this website. You will get more, much more information over here. Now let's say if I want to search for any PDF. Okay. So what I will be doing, the book name, let's say I want to search for any cybersecurity book. And only give me the result of PDF. What result I am getting? All the PDF files. Okay, so we can use a Google docking in such a way. Or else, let's see, I want to search for the movie which has been uploaded over the drive. So let's say the movie is. Thor's Love and Thunder, present in site, what site available in drive, which drive, Google Drive, google.com. Let me check for the first link. Here we have. Okay, so we can use this operator in such way. We have n list of an operators available for Google docking. Okay, we have few of the search engine available as well. By the name of an people, by the name of an Spokio. Spokio is very much specific to US. So you can go by the name. Okay, 
again uh, particularly with people not only of an individual you can get the information of an organization as well but it's an paid one same goes with the spoke here as well okay so what the spoke here will be doing he will start collecting the information from an open source open source as in from all the social media account so what are the publicly available data so he will start collecting all the result from there okay if you want if you think so that your information is been available freely available over there you can take it down as well you can connect with the spokio okay and they will take down your details you can do that as well okay so because it's a very uh, high possibility start not much people will be aware about this website okay so that's the reason you have all this information available if you are aware of it you can take down your details you can ask them to take it down so yes absolutely they can do it okay can you see searching in a database phone number email id current address location history family members so everything will be collected and it a uh, result will be given so some of the result will be uh, blurred so to get more information you need to pay certain charges for them clear till now how we can collect the information specifically for a person we have different tools available if you want to go with the tools you can use the tool as well so we have a harvester tool okay we have a, you can say waf woof as well we have a particular uh, you can say maltego as well to get more information so we have a set of tools available into the market Now let's switch to the organization. Okay, it's totally depend on to you what information you are providing. So when I'm saying I am getting the, all the information from all this account from an, uh, people search engine from a jobs website, we are providing the information, isn't it? We are giving the information. Social media account. We are providing complete information over there. it's totally into our hand what information to be provided how much how much to be updated over there so it's totally onto our hand always make sure whatever information you are providing in any of the website it should be very much limited don't provide your complete details okay and before to that make sure wherever you are providing this information that website or that particular domain is a legit one or not okay so nowadays it's very much easy to get the card details as well people are getting a scammed by this this kind of a website which are available nowadays so there are there are many multiple website which are not secured if you are making any transaction a mini payment all the details will be captured your card number your ccv uh, ccv number cvv number this are your master card live and active cards okay so similarly you can get more and more information easily it's totally on to our hand what information we are providing okay now let's move to uh, the next part that is you you want to collect an information of an organization okay let's say your target is info sector and now you want to get an information about an info sector and okay so how you will be collecting the information what will be the sources now think from an attacker perspective now
organization what they are doing they are giving some information as well when there is a job opening information as in for this job opening uh, a particular candidate should require uh, information or knowledge about this this xyz tools isn't it so as and particular you can say a uh, individual can i create a profile and get the information of an organization inside a job portal or the job website DNS dumpster, search. Okay, so these are what? These are the website or these are the domain where you can get the information. Okay, so let me quickly show you some of those. So let's say of a netcraft. Okay, let's go with first. Who is? I want the domain information, and my target is. In which domain the infosec train has been registered okay so i will be simply copying the url just get me the domain detail of infosec train here we have it's been registered under godaddy Certificate details as well. When it has been updated, registered on, expiring on. The domain has been expiring on 2024, registered on 2017, updated on 2019. The name of the servers. Okay. Now, I'm not happy with this information. I want a bit more information, a detailed information. So what I can do over here, I can take the help of a netcraft to get more detailed information about that website. So netcraft is going to generate a report for me. In that report, he is going to give me a additional detail. Okay. Now, can you see what I'm getting now? Site followed by hosting company. Okay. Not only that, domain registered. If I go a bit down, here are some IP address. So this can be in public IP. Okay, I cannot relate. I cannot say that it's an a particular private IP. We are not sure about it. Okay. If I scroll a bit down, I'm getting the server name as well. It's an Apache. Public key hashes which have been used, certificate hashes which have been used. Sign certificate timestamp certificate has been provided by when it has been provided hosting history the server details what version of the server has been used previously am I having some additional information now isn't it So with who is I got the information of a domain with netcraft. I got the information of a DNS now if I want to get more information of an internal domain I can go with DNS dumpster
is going to give me the internal domain details. Okay, hosting IP, DNS server detail. If I scroll a bit down, these are your hosting records. Different, different internal domain. Okay, along with this, I have the complete chart as well. Okay. Similarly, I can go with any of the organization. Let's go with Tesla. Here we have DNS service, hosting record, and these are your internal domains of Tesla. And this is a complete chart of it. Okay, so we have lots of subdomain related to Tesla. Isn't it? Now, there is one more website which is not meant to disclose or not meant to use in uh, such uh, in such way. Okay. That website is storing the information of all the certificates. Okay. Now, if they are storing the information of a certificate, that means the internal domain certificates has also been listed. So we can take an advantage. That website name is cert.sh. Cert.sh is going to show us all the internal domain detail along with that the certificate details. And let's say if uh, when we do a pen test during that time, we disclose some of the information, we got the information that this should not be available, so we can take it down as well. We can connect with those uh, domain owner, we can connect with Netcraft, we can connect with third.sh. Okay, so we will be asking them to remove this details, they will be doing it. But what they are doing, they are simply connecting with uh, all the social media account and gathering all the information and giving us all the information in front of us in one particular channel. Yeah. So Webalizer is an extension. So if you are using any browser, browser, so you can install this extension and that extension is going to give you the information of the website, okay? So website, the program language which has been used at the website is PHP, the database which has been used, blogs has been published where, live chats, what are the live chats have been used, okay, web server details. So all this kind of and basic information you can easily get from it, Vapalizer. The tool name is Vapalizer, it's an extension. You can install this if you are using any of the browser, either it's an, uh, you can say, a Google Chrome or either it's an Firefox. So the extension is available for both these browsers. Okay. 